This is a bingo board generator. Um, this is version 14 for some of you that have been following along because I keep making changes as people ask for things. Uh, but I made a lot of changes to how you uh, interface with this and also you can use it now to actually play the bingo game or draw them. So if you want to use this in a draw. The basic premise is you take a template and you edit it with any pictures or uh, fonts or anything you want, but it gets populated based on this list of words and um, then it generates as many boards as you like. So if you go to the list, the way you start this is you press the start button or control plus B will bring up sort of this main form. So if we want to edit the board itself, you hit this button. If you want to play bingo, you press this button and it will actually draw clues for you and keep track of all the boards and how close they are to a bingo and how full they are. Um, I'll go through that more slowly in a minute. Uh, but you can see this is the template, the five row template. And right now we're including a free space. If you do this, you don't include the free space. If you do this, you do. Also, I call it enforcing clue columns, like bingo B is one through 15, I is 16 through 30, etc. So let's say you want different categories for your bingo. If I enforce clue column, the categories match the clues, meaning colors, these are all sports, shapes, NFL countries, whatever you want it to be. But if I don't enforce the clues, then they're just randomly populating the board from the list, which may be what you want, it just depends. But it's as simple as pressing the, um, the button here. Now, if you want to make changes to this board, you, you, you can just, you know, change the row height, you can change the fonts, the colors, the backgrounds, etc. You can insert columns and rows, although it's very important, that's why I put it here in yellow, that when you generate the boards, this number for the row has to match the actual row of the first clue, and this number for the column has to match the actual column for the first clue, or you'll wind up with things like certain squares not changing, or uh, the colors not working. So just make sure you, um, you do that. Um, this button here is just if you like seeing the code run, you can um, watch it do it, I guess. Uh, I should mention that this is obviously happening via code. Um, it's perfectly safe. In fact, if you press Alt F11, you can see the, uh, the code. Most of it's written here in Module 1, but then there's also for two forms that we use, and there's, there's code behind there, uh, too, if you, if you wanted to see that. Uh, there's a change log if you want to see like how it's evolved over time. I can't imagine that's too many people. Um, but back to the um, the list here. So you either press the start button or control and B. If you want to edit the bingo board, like the template that you're going to blast out, I recommend pressing edit template. And let's say we wanted to insert a picture. A lot of people want to insert a picture in the free space or they want to do some theming on the side. Um, you can do that. So like, let's say I want to insert a uh, picture. I'm going to insert an image. And I'm actually a high school physics teacher. I just do this for fun. So this probably isn't the image you're going to use. It's just what I had handy. <laughs> so let's uh, make that small. And then I make that go in, say, the free space. Now, when I go back to here, I want to generate new boards. And when I press this button, what it's doing, which is actually a little different than previous versions of this, I'm having... Thank you for waiting. Boards. Your 10 bingo boards took 3.51 seconds to process. That's because I had the, uh, the announce button. If you have that unchecked, it won't make that sound. But now if you look at each of the uh, generated bingo boards, that, that is on there. So when you go to print it, that will, will be there. And of course, any changes you make to the text box or fonts or anything like that, it's literally generating the boards by copying the template worksheet and just making sure the squares all have the uh, appropriate um, values. And as far as printing, you press this prepare boards for printing. And this gives you some information about how to how, how you might want to edit that. And you can see these are all highlighted and it goes right into print preview. So like if you go to next page, next page, next page, you can see all the boards. Now can you see this tiny four here for board number four? If you want to change that or anything else, you probably want to go to page setup, header footer, custom footer, 
and this end tab what that's doing is that's inserting the name of the worksheet which is the board number one two three four five etc it's it's the equivalent to pushing this button here which um, does that and you might want that to say board number so you might say board like that and then you might say oh I want that to be bigger so people can read it or maybe you have some something you want to put here like a business name or somebody's birthday or you know whatever people seem to make bingo for a lot of different things and you hit OK and uh, see how that's that's showing up like that and of course you can do that for header too etc you might want to make this you know portrait or landscape or adjust the size now I will say one thing that comes up an awful lot is wanting to print more than one board at a time on the same page used to be able to from the file print choose to print more than one page per page right into Excel and I don't know if that's Excel or Windows has changed or just my print drivers have changed I no longer see that as an option so instead what you can do is you can actually print this thing to a PDF file uh, so if I do this prepare boards for printing and there's an instruction here if you you know file export PDF or print to PDF and then go to a website here's just one that I found that will let you upload your PDF and then create a new PDF with pages on pages so like you can make say two of your bingo boards per physical sheet of paper if you want to do it that way that's that's one way to do it um, now one thing that's a little bit different than previous versions too is uh, it keeps track of a leaderboard, and I'll show you what that means. So let's say you want to run a bingo. You're standing at the front of a room. Maybe you're lucky enough to be projecting, or maybe you just have the sheet in front of you, and you want to walk around the room and be able to do this. Um, you can do play bingo. So if you press this, it's going to bring up this button or this form. If you press draw, it draws the first clue. And now I can hit space bar, and I can actually draw them pretty quickly uh, if you want to speak the clue you can so check that button blue Germany golf uh, if you want to speak now these are the ones that are actually on the board you can circle round rectangle and four maybe, sides maybe you don't actually want to show the word that's on the board maybe you're doing this in foreign language and you're reading the English words and they have to find the Spanish word for example you can just hide the clue and then they they won't uh, see that also this is keeping track of every board number how close they are to a traditional bingo whether or not they've hit bingo and how full the board is and if you care where it's pulling that information from is on this sheet which is changing every time you um, draw a clue it's 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 updating um, now for somebody who's a little bit more advanced I have had people ask me can I have like a really exotic bingo like a special line or make a face or or um, anything like that if you really want you can do that um, so I'm gonna take you behind the curtain a little bit here if you unhide these columns so we're gonna unhide in the template the way it's actually determining whether there's a bingo or not are these cells here and these are already built for you one means yes that has been drawn zero means it has not and then these are just sort of helper cells that are adding the columns and adding the rows of the bingo board and the diagonals and from that it knows if you get if this is a five by five board if you get five in a row it knows that's going to be a bingo so over here in uh, out by around column Z it's going to vary if you insert rows but this word serendipity is just to help it find this location so what this means is the closest you are to a traditional bingo is two so you have two in a row this cell here will read bingo if this reaches five because it's a five by five board but if you want to be really exotic you can make this say bingo whenever it meets your criteria so you through summing these ones and zeros for a particular pattern could make that the uh, the bingo board so I can't imagine there's too many people that want to get that carried away but I have had at least one person ask about that 
So I, uh, I wanted to show you that. And then of course, before you print, you'll want to hide these so that they don't show up on all of the, um, the bingo boards. Um, when you go to change your bingo, like you want to put your words in, it's very important that if you want the words in specific columns, you have to um, add the column number here. And the, the coloring is done through conditional formatting. It's just a visual to help you, but it's up to you to make the, the column numbers be um, unique. Meaning, if you want all of these uh, colors to be a category, then every color clue, you have a one for the column. If you want these to be sports, every sport, you have a two, etc. That combined with when you make the board and you enforce the clue column, that is how you um, make them show up in the column you want. So I could imagine this in a foreign language uh, classroom, for example, you might have a column of words that are about things in the home or things related to time or things related to vacation. And you might um, either have a statement, a question that they have to fill in with a word or it might be the English word and then the clues the Spanish word. Or it might be just be a straight, let's just show them the Spanish word and see if they can find it. And uh, one of the nice things about a bingo board is you have to keep reading again and again and again. Uh, I've gotten a lot of people asking me about this for businesses, DJs and bars and stuff like that that like to make um, bingo boards. And they want to have their logo in the center of it or their phone number or things like that. Um, I'm going to say this one more time because it's that important. When you make your template, and uh, if you, this is really if you insert any rows or anything, this first cell here for the row and the column, see how the, the bingo board starts at row four, column one. This has to say row four, column one, or the, the thing um, doesn't, uh, doesn't work. And these buttons, delete boards, will just delete those boards. Edit bingo clues brings you right to here and gives you some tips. Edit the template board brings you like this to the, the, the template board. Another nice thing is you can make a board anywhere from 3x3 three three to 9x9. Nine nine. And if you do this, it will... And then you go to edit board template. It now brings you to the 9x9 nine nine, uh, template. And then you can just you know, change this to whatever you, uh, whatever you want. Again, these are just showing up in yellow just because you have highlight drawn cells. You can do that and uh, include free space or don't. Um, I'm talking a lot at this point. Uh, people keep asking me if it can do more things, so I tend to keep making changes and playing around with it. So I'm including here a link to, um, when I make this video, I'll put that link here. Uh, and this will open the video for you. So like this is the previous video opening now. Um, and if and when there are any updated versions of this file, it'll be in the, the YouTube uh, description. So yeah, I, I this is an update to a Microsoft. How many people were, were using this? So I hope this is uh, useful for people. And just for fun, if you check the show screen updating button, it will run slower, but you can get a better sense of what it's doing when you generate the boards. It's literally copying and pasting the template with new values. Thank you for waiting. Your 10 bingo boards took 5.63 seconds to process. And there's a little, little window there. All right, sometimes YouTube is useful.